all. So welcome you all to HSR ISKCON Center. So today is special special guest available. Umapati <laughs> Prabhu, thank you very much for all the way coming here. So Umapati Prabhu came from Kanchi. So just called me. He came to Bangalore. He called me yesterday. I given address. I did not expect that you will be here today. <laughs> Thank you very much, Prabhu, for all the way coming here. So I will tell about him at the end of the class. <laughs> okay. Okay, that's okay. Okay, so we all have completed chapter 13 last week. Uh, I'm sure some of you were not available last week. <laughs> and uh, some of others are new for today's class. <laughs> so anyways, we will try to cover both uh, small recap about the last chapter and then we will continue about today's chapter. So before we start, let's take Prayers. Om Ajnana Timiran Dhasya Jnana Jana Shalakaya Chakshurun Viritam Yena Smai Shri Gurave Namaham Namagom Vishnu Padaya Krishna Preshtaya Bhutale Srimate Bhakti Vedanta Swamin Itinamine Namaste Saraswate Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvisesha Shunyavadi Paschatya Deshatarine Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityanandam Sri Advaita Dadadara Sri Vasadi Gaura Bhakta Vrunda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Rama Hare Hare Shila Prabhupada Ki oh, His Holiness Jai Pataka Swami Maharaj Ki Okay so the name of the today's chapter is the three modes of material nature. Three modes of material nature. If you see in the 13th chapter, we learned about, uh, especially the jnana section started in the 13th chapter. Right? So we already discussed about it that, you know, from 13th to 18th chapter, it is all about jnana section. So in a way, this is a jnana mishrita bhakti. So bhakti is not going anywhere. Bhakti will continue coming along with us in all the chapters. Okay, so when we talk about Jnana, the first thing in the previous chapter, almost Prabhu explained in detail. So we all felt it is almost like a science. Uh, so, so Arjuna asked uh, six questions, right? Arjuna asked with six questions and um, Krishna answered all the six questions in chapter number 13. What were those six questions? What is Prakriti? What is Purusha? What is Kshetra? What is Kshetra Jnana? Jnana and Jnaya. Okay, these are the six questions. So we have seen in detail what is Prakriti, what is Purusha. Purusha means enjoyer. Prakriti means the one who is being enjoyed. Okay. So, if Mataji, please come sit. Okay. So, if we think that Prakriti Purusha in terms of sex, then it is wrong. Okay. As for the scriptures, as for what Bhagavad Gita is mentioned, a Purusha means who is enjoyer. You may be in a female body, but if you think that you want to enjoy, if your attitude is to enjoy, then you are called Purusha. So, we all are Purushas. No one is three here. Okay, we all are Purushas here. But unfortunately, we are thinking we all are Purushas, but actual Purusha is not something that we think we are Purushas, right? But we are not Purushas. The actual Purusha is Parama Purusha. Who is that? Lord Krishna. Okay. So, because only Krishna has the rights on all the things. Only Krishna can enjoy. Because he is the only one who is creator. So, Krishna is the only enjoyer and Krishna is the only 
only creator so whatever the uh, you know conception that we have whatever the illusion that we have about we are the enjoyer of whatever we possess is a uh, wrong truth okay <laughs> so we understood about purusha and we come back about prakriti later then we also understood about kshetra and kshetrajna kshetra okay. means field right the field field of activities so generally if you see if you think about uh, in a normal you know language if you want to understand cricketers if they want to play so where will they play in the field cricket field okay so that means if they don't study about the field can they perform best no. so before they start game they should study about the field so actually the kshetra means the body and uh, body is the place where we perform our actions if we don't have body can we act no but when we know that body is our kshetra did we do enough research about our body before we start acting no <laughs> so what will happen if you don't study about a uh, field and directly take a bat and then start batting okay we we may not get the you know victory okay right we might lose the game okay so in the same way we are here started playing in our body acting in our body but it's very important that before you start actions in this body you have to learn about the body right you have to learn about the body if i ask what is body how is this body made up of where is this body coming from and where is this body going to do we have, do we all have all this knowledge in the past no so prabhu has explained us very well so this body is made up of 24 elements right this body the complete knowledge about the body is given now we know about the body so that we can use this body you know efficient right and then you perform your activities so that you will get victory otherwise no victory so panchabhutas panchabhutas are the five first elements using which this body is made up of so other than panchabhutas what are the other elements that are there karmendriya gnanendriya five karmendriyas five gnanendriyas gnanendriyas means the senses that are used for acquiring the knowledge from the outside right okay? to acquire the gnana so i want to learn something about something outside okay let us say i close my eyes and somebody brought some flower and shown it to me and they asked me what is this flower i am not seeing this flower but how do i identify so i'll use the smell i'll use my nose i'll smell whether it is uh, uh, what is the type of the flower we can identify and we can tell okay the flower is this that means we are using our uh, senses to acquire the knowledge about the external things outside our body okay there are some things which are outside our body we want to understand about it so we are acquiring the knowledge using our senses and those senses are called gnanendriyas okay and there are some senses which are not used for acquiring the knowledge which are used for giving out of our body okay like we do actions when we perform some actions we give some output right so those those senses are called karmendriyas okay so the, in, the the senses that are used for performing action so these are the five indriyas again so other than these five gnanendriyas five karmendriyas we have tanmatra okay indriyartha we call it as so or in english we have to say it is sense objects okay so when you have five gnanendriyas there will be five sense objects okay each sense will have one object because i can enjoy the sense object so what can i say enjoy vision vision beauty okay okay beauty maybe anything that that i can see and enjoy so vision 
So in the same way, ears, ears can enjoy what? Sound. So the beauty is a sense object and the sound is a sense object. Okay, these are all part of our, you know, body. Then these are all the uh, senses that we are talking all are about um, gross senses. We can see them, we can feel them. Okay, these are called gross senses. But there are some senses which are subtle. These subtle senses cannot be seen, but that does not mean that subtle senses are not there. What are those subtle senses? Subtle senses are mind, intelligence, and ego. Okay, ego, ego. Can anybody say I don't have ego? Uh, but if you say uh, ego can be seen, no. So ego cannot be seen, but it is there. In the same way, intelligence. Intelligence is there, but we can't see it. We can't feel it. <laughs> we can't understand that there is an intelligence factor in our body. Okay. And in the same way, mind. So my mind means in in Kannada, in Telugu, it is manasu. Okay. So. Nobody can say that I don't have mind. If anybody says, then they are exceptional. <laughs> so mind is there, intelligence is there, false ego is there. The problem is we don't realize. So when I say a person left the body, what does it mean? What does it mean? Somebody passed away. What does it mean? Left the physical body. Okay. Does that mean that he is leaving his mind, intelligence, and uh, ego also? Yes. yes. Okay. 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 No, Atma only alone cannot go out. Okay. So Atma has to go with some carrier. Without carrier, nothing can be passed. <laughs> okay. The carrier is subtle body. Subtle body will take the soul from one body to another body. Okay, so we, we might be thinking that this body end means the life end and the soul, not, there is no concept of soul. But Bhagavad Gita says about soul concept. So he says there is a punar janma. We also have to take birth again. So there are so many types of living beings. Somebody like a female, somebody like a male, somebody like an animal, somebody like good human being somebody like a bad human being, somebody is a cruel person. So why we all are coming in these different types of, uh, you know, uh, mindset according to our karma, past karma. So if anybody says that there is no soul, there is no karma, then everybody should be same. There should not be any difference. Right? Everybody should have same privileges. Everybody should have same knowledge. Everybody should have same thinking. Everybody should be, you know, behaving in same way. Everybody should be good. Everybody should be bad. Otherwise, <laughs> but why different persons are different ways? So this all is because of three modes of material nature. This all is because of three modes of material nature. So now we need to understand why we are like this today. Why we are not like something else, what we wanted to be. So if you don't understand why you are like this today and why, how you don't, you want to become something else, then you can't practice that and you can't achieve that. Right? So for that, first of all, we should understand what is the reason, what is influencing us to behave like this? Okay. Uh, for example, I will tell you, in a, in a small pond, there are three fishes, okay? Three fishes are close friends. They take birth, they took birth together and they are living together. And one day what happened when they were playing on the bank of the lake, uh, one person was talking. Tomorrow morning I will come and I will use the net and I will catch all the fishes in this pond. Okay. And uh, all three fishes heard of this. And one fish said, 
something wrong is going to happen tomorrow we have to be very careful okay so better we leave this spot and go to somewhere else so that by the time tomorrow that hunter comes and then he will throw the net on us we will not be here and we will be escaping so then one fish said don't worry about tomorrow who knows what will happen tomorrow whether that person will come or not we don't know okay even if he comes when he catches we will see what to be done at that time why should we worry really now there are so many people like that today right we don't plan tomorrow <laughs> we don't plan future we'll say let it happen whatever it happens but this time current moment we have to enjoy let us enjoy the current moment we will think about tomorrow when it comes okay so another fish said jaisa hota hai waisa jo hota hai wo hota hai uh if it is written in my faith that i have to die i will die if it is written in my faith that i have to live i will live why should i really put an effort and then try to escape or try to think all these things let it happen whatever it happens okay so you just understand three fishes living together playing together thinking three in three different ways okay so then what happened next day morning the person came and he thrown the net by the time he thrown the net one fish has already escaped because he has already told that i am not going to be here if i am here i will be caught so i am not going to be here i'll leave so he left to the next pond another pond then the two fishes are caught in the net so the intelligent fish what did it, what did it say i will see when the situation comes right okay that fish said uh that fish acted as if it is dead <laughs> that fish acted as if it is dead then uh, uh the the fellow who caught these fishes he thought that this fish is dead and then he has removed this uh, fish and then he put on the ground the moment he put the fish on the ground he jumped into the water and then it escaped <laughs> okay then the third fish it is just waiting for what to happen to it <laughs> let it happen whatever it happens if it if it is going to tell me let me and if it is going to adopt me let him adopt so this is the nature okay of different people so in fact there are 84 lakh species in this world it's not one species okay 84 lakh species out of 84 lakh species there are 4 lakh human beings human beings are not one not one one type because here i think 20 people are 20 different people right <laughs> so there are 4 lakh types of people how are these 4 lakh types of people coming from where are they coming from how this variation came in different different people so this is very very important for us to understand so krishna is going to answer about this in this chapter okay and the next thing is he has clearly declared that these three modes are the reason for different types of people these three modes influences deciding what we should behave like how we should behave like okay our character is decided by these three modes so when we know that we are controlled by three modes but we are thinking that you know everything we are only doing but in fact if you see a puppet show you know right puppet show huh? puppet show the puppets are playing but there is a person behind the puppet who is actually making this puppet to dance we don't see him we only see the puppet he is moving the legs he is moving the hands and he is playing and we enjoy and we say that oh what a nice puppet and it is really you know uh, playing well but actual credit goes to the person who is actually making it play okay so so we don't see them so the reason uh, why we are acting like this whatever the actions that we are performing we are like just puppets okay we are not doing anything on our own wish whatever actions that we are doing is the play that is made by the three gunas okay three guna guna more means gunas okay so 
let us see what is clearly mentioned by krishna in this chapter so if we know that the trigunas are the reason for this life and this uh, the way we are living then what are the three different gunas or the three different modes and what are the characteristics of a person who is in what guna okay so let us say uh, the three gunas are uh, sattva raja tamo okay in english we call it as mode of goodness mode of passion mode of ignorance mode of goodness mode of passion mode of ignorance so what is the characteristic of a person who has the influence of mode of goodness what is the characteristic of a person who has the influence of mode of um, passion what is the characteristics of a person who has the influence of mode of ignorance we need to understand then we will understand what mode we are in right what mode we are in then we also have to understand how does it matter what mode i am in okay we might be thinking let it be i am in a mode of ignorance let it be how does it matter okay then krishna explains what will happen to you if you are in mode of krishna will explain you what will happen to you if you are dying in mode of passion and what will happen to you if you are dying in mode of ignorance so we need to understand in what mode we are in and what will happen to us because we don't know how we came here right at least we should know where we will go right at least we should know where we will go after the death where we will go we should know so that we will be prepared right tomorrow you are traveling and you should be packing the bags today <laughs> so <laughs> otherwise <laughs> so it will be miserable for you tomorrow so so we all should know in what more we are and in what more we are going to leave this body and where we are going to leave so we will be prepared then if you know where you are going to end up then you have to be prepared let us say if you are going to some place where you don't want to go and you want to go to some other place then what will you do today only you will prepare right and you will catch something else some other bus some other train some other aeroplane <laughs> you will catch so you have to prepare and then you will be catching a right bus and reaching a right place that's why krishna says what you have to do to come out of the influence of these boats so that you will not be landing in the place where you don't want okay so this is the essence of this chapter today what krishna is going to tell so let us see what krishna uh, uh, krishna is talking shri bhagavan uvacha param bhuya pravaksha anam uttamam यज्ञात्वामुनय सर्वे परम सिद्धि मितो गताः आता जी एनीबॉडी कैन रीड ओके so before telling about the knowledge he is glorifying the knowledge yeah. if you don't know the value of that knowledge definitely right so let us say uh you go and study engineering if i tell you you may not be interested to learn or you may not be interested to pursue your engineering degree if you don't know what you will become after you study engineering right so uh, let us say you want to become a doctor and uh, if i tell you you go and study engineering what will happen so you may not be liking it so first of all you should know what what is the greatness of the knowledge that i have to learn okay so krishna is telling here that the knowledge that he is going to give is the best knowledge best of the best if you remember parama guhya jnanam he said in the past reduce the sound for so parama guhya jnanam he said what am second so parama guhya jnanam he said and he said it is a, a raja vidya in the past right he said raja vidya raja vidya means raja vidya means best of the knowledge superlative degree of the knowledge so when he already told about the raja vidya little increase so when he already told about the raja vidya what else can be the best then 
Everything else can be the best. He has already told Rajavicha. But now Krishna is telling Jnana Muttamam. Jnana Muttamam. Okay. Jnana Ram, Jnana Muttamam. And that means Krishna is telling it is the best of the best. Superlative degrees are the best. Okay. So Krishna is going to tell this one. What will happen by knowing this? He is telling, this is not something that I am telling. In the past, so many people have learned about this knowledge and got the perfection. So he is giving the proof. That means there is an evidence that you know, the uh, whatever Krishna is telling is really Jnana Muttama. Okay. And it is important for us also to learn. So what is the Jnana Muttama? We will see. Very, very important sloka. Sarvayo nishu kaunteya mutaya sambhavantiya. Tasam brahma mahadhyoni aham bija pitaha. Should we understood that all species of life, O son of Kunti, are made possible by birth in this material nature, and that and the seed giving fathers. Okay. So, first of all, we all should understand where from we came. Okay. Krishna is giving the knowledge here. Who are we all now? And where we came from? Before coming here, where we were. Okay. So, Krishna is saying, I am the seed giving father. Krishna is saying, I am the seed giving father. That means, who is our father? Krishna. We forgot it. <laughs> so, we all forgot about Krishna. The problem is, he kept us in the material nature. In the previous chapter, we detailed, in detail we have seen about Purusha, Kshetra, Kshetra Jnana, all these things we have seen. But uh, Prakruti, we have not seen in detail. He simply said, uh, just a, uh, the object of enjoyment is the Prakruti. Object of enjoyment is the Prakruti. So now, in detail, we are seeing this Prakruti. Actually, Krishna, what he is telling, this prakruti means this is the material nature, right? This material nature is made by Krishna. And Krishna is impregnating the material nature. Krishna is impregnating the material nature. That means he is giving the seed into the material nature. That means we all are the living beings, are coming to material nature just by the glance of Krishna on the material nature. You can see on the picture. Krishna is looking at material nature. What is happening when Krishna is looking into the material nature? Living entities like us are coming from the spiritual nature to the material, material nature. Okay. So this is called impregnation. So Krishna is keeping us in this material nature. Just like how a scorpion lies, lays eggs in the rice. Okay. Scor what, did what, what does scorpion do? Scorpion will go and lay eggs in the rice. Okay. And the rice will be hatched in the rice. So, sorry, eggs will be hatched in the rice. There are different ways of hatching the eggs. Different uh, birds will hatch in one way, and maybe the fishes hatch in different way. And in the same way, scorpion hatches the eggs in this way. Scorpion keeps the eggs in the rice. But once after 21 days or 22 days, Eggs will break and then scorpions will come out. Okay, we, we see that the scorpions are coming out from the rice. But the actual fact is the scorpions are coming from the scorpion eggs. Okay. So, how the scorpions came into the uh, rice? It is because the mother scorpion kept the eggs in the rice. If mother scorpion does not keep the eggs in the rice, the scorpions cannot come out of the rice. But for us to see that, you know, we think that the scorpions are born out of the rice. Right? Scorpions are born out of the rice. But the fact is, somebody else is lying the eggs there. So, if you think that there is a science, and because of the science, we are just like that born. And just like that dying. Just like that taking the birth. Just like that getting the body. Just like that losing the body. Then, it is just like how we are thinking that the scorpion is taking birth out of the rice. Right? So, Krishna is glancing on the material nature and sending the living entities into the material nature. 
Okay. Actually, the spiritual nature is pure in nature. Spiritual nature is pure. But whereas material nature is contaminated. Actually, if you see the rainwater, right? Rainwater is actually pure. If the rainwater falls into the river, what will happen? It becomes the river water. If the rainwater falls into the sea, what will happen? It becomes sea water. If you take the rainwater, you say that no, 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 rainwater came and if I drink it, it will be sweet. What will happen? <laughs> if the if the rainwater falls into the mud, what will happen? It will become mud. In the same way, the spiritual nature, we are spirit souls. Okay? We are pure in nature. We are kept in the material nature. So what will happen? To the pure spirit, it gets contamination. So because of this contamination, we are forgetting about our father. Okay. Seed giving father we forgot. Okay. Just like how in childhood, if somebody, you know, missing from their father or mother. Okay. It happens, right? We have seen so many instances where, you know, they went to some places where, you know, they miss their kids. Okay. Holy places, it happens. And what will happen? The children grows without father, mother for some years. Then what will happen? Can the children after he grow, let us say uh, in the boyhood, in the childhood, you know, the boy missed his father. Uh, maybe when he was not able to talk or maybe he was not able to walk, that time he, he missed his father. Then maybe after five years or 10 years when he realized who is my father, can he remember the father's face? Can he remember the father's uh, uh, village? Can he remember the father's mobile number? <laughs> can he remember the father's address? Nothing, right? That is our situation. Okay, we were kept in this material nature because of the contamination of the material nature. We forgot about our father. We can't recognize our father today. So, and uh, th does that mean that we should not search for our father? We have to. Some other way, we have to search for our father. And someday we should reach and we should find out our father and then we we, we go go back to our original position. So, so that, that is the same way when we came from the spiritual world, from the Krishna's glance. So Krishna is father and who is mother? Who is mother? Krishna is keeping uh, living it is where? In the nature, in the material nature. He is keeping us in the material nature. So this material nature is our mother. Okay, our mother. So. If Krishna is father and material nature is our mother, so we will understand the position of our mother. Okay. So we will understand the position of our mother. Somebody thinks, who is God? People say this nature is God. Right? But Krishna clearly said this nature is controlled by me. This, this nature is made by me. And this nature is controlled by me. This nature is also going to be destroyed by me. That means there is something beyond nature which is God. Okay? That is Krishna. So that's why Krishna is controlling this nature. So Krishna has impregnated this material nature and we all living beings came here. And how are we contaminated? We have to understand now. Okay. So Sattvam Rajasthamam Iti Guna Prakruti Sambhava Nibadhanti Mahabaho Dehe so conditioned by these modes. Okay, we are conditioned by these modes. There are three modes. What are those three modes? Sattva, Raja, Tama, Tamas. Mode of goodness, mode of passion, mode of ignorance. These are the three modes which are conditioning us. Mode means, actually, the guna means a rope. A rope. Okay. You know um, the, how the rope is made up of? You take three threads. Okay. Bind it together. And it becomes a small thread. And like that, you take another three and you bind it again like this. And like that, another three you take, then you make this becomes a big rope. Okay. If uh, you are tied with that rope, what will happen? 
can you get uh, relieved from that uh, bindings just like that because it's very strong right it's very strong it's not possible and these three modes are binding us we think we are free but we are not free we are conditioned we are conditioned by three modes and these three modes you can see the picture here sattva raja tama beautiful girls okay and uh, they are holding the ropes and making us play we are like a puppet show, puppet show but we think we are doing everything but actual thing is the influence of material nature is making us to act like this and beyond this material nature beyond these three modes krishna is there okay beyond these three modes krishna is there but we can say if there are only three modes why should there be four lakh people four lakh type of people there should be three types of people right so people who are in sattva guna people who are in raja guna people who are in tama guna why should there be four lakh people and people if you see there are let us consider there are three primary colors generally there will be three primary colors red blue green okay red blue green these are the three primary colors if you mix these three primary colors you can make n number of colors and right? you can make n number of colors so you need to know the ratio how much ratio i have to mix red how much ratio i have to mix green how much ratio i have to mix blue we should know accordingly we will make a color if i if you ask my daughter she will tell me. if i want a, um, you know orange color what should i do what should i do if i ask my daughter she will tell you mix this much red this much blue this much green she will tell if i mix exactly the no i will get orange color okay so in the same way when you mix these three modes there are different type of people that we are okay so there will there some people will have the inclination is more compared to mode of passion and mode of ignorance some people will have mode of passion more compared to goodness and ignorance some people will have mode of ignorance more less and passion the ratio at which we have decides what character we have today okay so so who will behave like what we should understand so this is the reason that's why people in sattva guna people in raja guna people in tama guna exhibit different different qualities okay so for us to understand whether we are in sattva guna we are in raja guna we are in tama guna we have to understand the characteristics of the people who are in that guna okay and another point krishna is telling here is people are conditioned because of these three modes krishna is not telling that you know you are conditioned with only tama guna and raja guna you are conditioned with the sattva guna also so we need to understand which guna is best among all these three and to which guna we have to to which mode we have to you know travel current what is our current uh, uh, guna Uh, or maybe the what is the mode influence on us currently, and how can we overcome the influence of that mode, and how can we elevate ourselves? We need to understand. So for that we need to understand which mode is, you know, important. But all we understand that you know sapphaguna is the best. Okay, sapphaguna is the best, and we should all be in sapphaguna. But Krishna is telling even sapphaguna is also conditioning you. Krishna is not telling that the sapphaguna will re relieve you. so if you know that you are in this material world and then this material world is contaminated with these three modes of material nature that means if you really want to come out of this contamination you have to come out of this modes influence so you have to become you have to become gunatita okay you have to give on uh, you know you you have to come out of the all the three modes of influence the influence of all these three modes so for that where you should be and what influence you can accept that we need to understand so first let us understand what is about sattva guna okay tatra sattvam nirmalatma prakashakam anamayam okay 
Okay. So example, Brahmana, scientist, philosopher, and poet. Okay. So Krishna is talking about mode of goodness here. So what is Krishna saying? In the mode of goodness is the pure among all other goodness, all other modes. Mode of goodness is pure. If you are in a mode of goodness, you are a pious person. Okay. You are a pious person. Whatever activities that you do are pious activities, not sinful activities. A people who are not sinful are in the influence of mode of sattva guna or mode of goodness. So what will happen? See, Krishna is again telling that mode of goodness is also conditioning you. Mode of goodness is also binding you in this material nature. You want to be coming out of this material nature. You want to be coming out of this contamination. That means you have to be coming out of the sattva guna also. Okay. But being in sattva guna, if you think that I am a pious person, I do all rituals, I do ajna, I do puja, I do devi devata pujas, and I do everything that I that that gives me pi, pi, uh, the pious credit. So, so that does not mean that you are not conditioned in this material nature. Okay. So, generally, spirituality means people think that the spirituality means doing the pious activities. Okay, maybe doing dana, dharma, yajna, all these things. We might be thinking that uh, you know. Uh, these are all the uh, spiritual activities. The purpose of any spiritual activity is for us to bring out of this influence of material nature. Okay. But unfortunately, Krishna is telling here that if a pious person who is in the mode of goodness is also binded because of the happiness that he gets, because of the knowledge that he possesses. Example, a Brahmana. Brahmanas are in Sattva they, they are Sattvic, right? They eat Sattvic food, they eat, they behave Sattvic. They don't go and, you know, fight with anybody. Right? <laughs> Even if you scold him, he will say, get lost. <laughs> okay. So, God will take care of you. <laughs> so, so, such an attitude. That if a person in Sattva Guna, he will not react to uh, unnecessary things because he has more knowledge. But, a Brahmana thinking that I am better among all. A Brahmana thinking that I have knowledge. A Brahmana thinking that I am the top among other Varmas. That is the binding factor. Okay, That is the binding factor. So Krishna is telling if you are in Sattva Guna, you will have this nature. Okay. So we should be coming out of all these you know, thinking uh, attitude. Like, you know, whatever you possess, you don't be proud of what you possess. It may be knowledge, it may be happiness, or it may be wealth, it may be health, or anything. Don't be proud of what you have. The proudness that you have today because of whatever you possess is the reason for you to get binded in this world. Okay. And you again have to take birth. And you again, you have to start from zero. You might have completed MTech now. You might have completed BTEC now. You have to start from again LKG, UKG. You take birth again, what do you think? Uh, in my last life, I have completed my PhD. Now I am a doctor. Can you say that? <laughs> no. You have to start from LKG and again you complete PhD. Then only you will become a doctor. Otherwise, you can't be called as a doctor. Last birth, I am a, 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 a great doctor. I am a surgeon. Now you give me a knife, I will cut you. What will happen? <laughs> No, we have to acquire again knowledge. So we have to start from scratch. <laughs> so again, you have to take all the struggles to become a doctor. Okay. So a scientist, a philosopher, these are all in Sattva Guna. You know, they eat Sattvic food. They don't eat non -wish. They eat only vegetarian foods. That's why their brain is sharp. 
they can think sharp they can invent new things they they can achieve many things okay you you go and ask any scientist do you eat non veg they'll say i don't even eat non veg i don't even eat onion dal you you see a pilot a pilot okay uh pilot before actually you know getting into the duty he will be tested whether he has taken onion garlic for the past 48 hours or not in the past 48 hours if he has taken the onion garlic he is not he is not eligible for driving a flight he is he cannot be you know taken into the flight he will be rejected so because a person should have more concentration if you are really driving a you know aeroplane and uh, your mind should be very sharp and you should be taking action immediately next second you should be there. your mind should be acting very sharp for that uh, you should not be taking any other okay that's why pilots will be tested before actually flying if there is a symptom of taking onion garlic for last 48 hours or something i think some period is there it may be two days or three days i don't remember so for last two days if you have taken onion garlic he is not allowed into the plane okay so in the same way the philosophers the scientists they were also are so sharp because of the nature that they have developed by what they have taken in okay what kind of food that we are taking is the nature that we develop so how are we developing sattva guna how are we developing rajo guna how are we developing that is because what we are taking in what we are eating will decide what we have to behave if you put garbage in you will get garbage out okay if you put garbage in and if you say i want to speak sweet voice i want to speak you know <laughs> sweet words it is not possible that's why you see people who are talking rubbish they take rubbish into into them so whatever they eat they exhibit so whatever it may be sattva guna is also binding us okay it is like a golden shackles okay <laughs> it is shackle but it is a golden shackle next rajo guna rajo ragatmakam vidhi sanga samudbhavam तन्नि कर्मसंगेनदेहिनम okay so krishna is telling a person who has an influence of mode of passion he will have unlimited desires okay he will have unlimited desires today i have one house i'll think of constructing another house today i have one degree i'll think of getting another degree today i have some 1 lakh i'll think of making 2 lakhs and i'll be thinking how this 1 lakh can make another 1 lakh not me okay that's why we all give money for interest right so this is the attitude a person will have because the mode of passion is there influencing on him okay so basically a person who has influence of mode of passion will always think that what profit i will get always if i do something what benefit i will get so in fact for them even a father and mother are also uh, uh, you know business right if i take care of my father he will give me property uh if i do, if father is not giving us property why should i really take care of him there are a lot of old age homes okay they will take care of them so th- because you know current world is like this uh, it, this is not something that i am you know exaggerating things but it, it's it's real okay people think relations also as a business uh in fact father mother is also business if i don't take care of mother what will happen so for example a person uh, in in uh, shrimad bhagavatam one story comes um uh, the guy asked for beauty okay and he has grown old and but he has lot of desires in him he does not want to give up his desires he want to enjoy uh, enjoy girls enjoy beauty enjoy nature enjoy 
uh, his position, enjoy his assets, everything he wants to do. But he has no age. His uh, body is weakened and his senses are, you know, not supporting him to enjoy. So then he prayed uh, uh, demigods. Then demigod said, you have five sons. Go and ask your five sons. If anybody can give, uh, give you their uh, youth age, then they will grow old and you will become young. Yayati. Yayati. Yayati story. Okay. So Yayati went and asked uh, uh, his uh, elder son, Yadu. So Yadu said, uh, no, the purpose of this body is to get liberation. And I have to use this body and develop detachment. Okay. That means the kind of attachment that you have is the reason for you to fall like this. So I want to develop detachment. For that, I want to use my senses. I have to marry. I have to enjoy. I have to get kids. And I have to, once I enjoy to the extreme, right? What will happen? We get frustration. We get detachment on it. If, you, if I give you five laddus, what will happen? Uh, sixth laddu will you eat? No. In the same way, Yadu said, I don't want to enjoy. I want to get detachment. For getting detachment, I will enjoy more. Okay. So the ultimate goal of enjoyment is also to get detachment. Then that enjoyment is okay. Okay. That enjoyment is okay. Then other comes said, he has another four sons, right? Then he went to second son, third son, fourth son, fifth son, he went. Second, third, fourth son said, no, we don't want to give our uh, you know, youthhood to you. If I give my youthhood to you, how will I enjoy? So I have to enjoy. I'm here to enjoy. And lifelong I have to enjoy. And I'm here to enjoy only. If I don't enjoy, why I need this body? Right? So I don't give you my body. I don't give you my beauty. I don't give you my energy. I don't give you my health. Then the last son, his name is Pururava. Okay. Pu, Pu, what is the name, Mother? Puru. Yeah, Puru. So Puru came and Puru said, Okay, I will give my life to you. Then Yayati has taken all health, wealth, everything of Puru, and then he enjoyed for so many years. Then after he developed the detachment, then he said, I don't want all this beauty, all this anymore. Now I have to try for getting the liberation. That is the ultimate enjoyment. Because after enjoying for so many years with his age and with his son's age, he then realized that, you know, this is not the ultimate enjoyment. Then he started a uh, spiritual path. Then he started worshipping Krishna. Okay. Then he has given his youth to his uh, son Puru again back. Then what will what happened? Who has become the emperor after Ayati? Puru. Puru. Why? Because yeah. actually the elder son should become uh, king. But Puru became king because Puru listened to what father has instructed. Okay. That means if you are a son to somebody and if you are alive, you are bound to get the father's assets. <laughs> okay. Just like how Puru, he was just alive. He did not die. And he, ha he listened to what uh, his father asked for. Then he become the king. Not other, Yadhu or anybody. That's why Krishna has taken birth in Yadhu Vamsha, not in Puru Vamsha. Right? Because Yadhu is a great person. And he understood the purpose of the body. That's why Krishna has taken birth in Yadhu, Yadhu dynasty. Okay. So, the desire that we have, if we don't understand the reason for this desire, if we don't develop the detachment with this desire, then we will be going to hellish planets. Okay. So, or we will be taking birth again and again. Different types of enjoyments. We want to enjoy with eyes, we want to enjoy with ears, we want to enjoy with nose, we want to enjoy with mouth, we want to enjoy with skin, we want to enjoy with all our senses. Fortunately, the human body has the capability of enjoying with all senses. Whereas if you take a body of an animal, you cannot enjoy with all senses. Only one sense or two senses will be more prominent with which we can enjoy. 
So by having all five senses, if you don't utilize all these five senses in the service of Lord, and you try to enjoy for yourself, then you have to take birth as an animal. The animal which enjoys with the eyes, the animal which enjoys with the nose, the animal which enjoys with the ears, the animal which enjoys with bone. Different enjoyments we want, right? Different animal bodies we get. So, the and it is not the end. When we take birth as an animal, we might have realized that what mistake I have done in the past. Why am I like a pig? Why am I like a dog? Why am I like a cat? Why am I like a snake? What mistake I have done in my past life? Even if you realize, you can't do anything. Because a dog cannot talk. It only can bark. <laughs> right? It has a limitation. Even if the dog wants to talk, what will it do? It will say, it will just bark. Can't do anything. Because everybody has a limitation of what it can do and what it cannot do. So, our past karmas, our past designs are deciding our future body. And the past karmas, past desires are because of the influence of the material nature. Influence of the three modes. Okay. So, if you are under the influence of the mode of passion, then you will have more and more desires. You will use all your senses in the sense enjoyment. Okay. So, that is the characteristic. A grohatta life. You see, when you are a bachelor, you think that you know, I should get a wife so that I can enjoy when you are uh, when you are married then you get you, you will think that you know marriage life is frustrated wife is you know uh, putting so many conditions so at least i should get relief from this life i should at least get one or two kids okay <laughs> so that at least if i see my kids face i will be happy kids kids face if i see then i will be happy instead of seeing the wife's face <laughs> okay and then we get kids then once we get kids what will happen then not for me, not for my wife, I have to start working for my kids also. Right? Then double duty. Triple duty starts. Okay. Uh, then once, uh, uh, you know, it's not that you know, I have to yearn only for me, I have to yearn for my, my son's settlement also. Some people don't yearn for them, they yearn for son's settlement also. Son also should be happy even if he does not yearn. Okay. Then some people think, that my grandson also should be happy. That much I should earn now. Okay. So this way, we will be in a running race. Forget the essence of our life. We forget the purpose of our body. We forget the purpose of our senses. We forget the purpose why we are living in this body. And then we start, you know, running behind money. We start, you know, acquiring more and more in properties. Mine is mine. Others is also mine. Okay, this is the attitude that we will develop. Okay, so this attitude will bind us in this material body. This attitude is also binding us in this material body. And the next mode is mode of ignorance. Tamastatnana jamvindi mohanam sarvadehinam. Pramadhalasya nidra bihi tanni bhagnati bharata. Prabhuji? Know that the mode of darkness is born of ignorance. The religion of all embodied puni and witches. The result of this mode are madness, indolence and sleep, which bind the tension. Okay. A person who is Having an influence of mode, of mode of ignorance, how he will be? He will always be thinking, I want to sleep for one more hour. I want, he will be lazy. First of all, he will not be active. Okay. He will be thinking, morning you try to, you know, wake him up. What will he say? Allow me to sleep for one more hour. <laughs> Two more hours. So five minutes, at least five minutes more. So this is the laziness. Even if a person gets up from the bed, uh, even if he comes out of the sleep, he will not get up from the bed. Okay, another one hour, another one hour. He will be in the dreams. Okay, and uh, he will get up and he will sit on the sofa and he will not go for brunch or he will not go for uh, bath or he will not start his uh, daily activities. He will show laziness. 
basically. Okay, he'll show laziness. He will not be willing to work. He will, his mind will not be active. His body will not be active. He will always be thinking to sleep. Okay, and such people who get more and more sleep, they will be addicted to alcohol, or they will be addicted to sleeping pills, or you know, uh, they start developing a lot of addictions. Right? If they are more and more addicted, then what will happen? They will take drugs also. So I have shown you a picture, the mode of ignorance uh, uh, example. So, so due to the influence of mode of ignorance, we are behaving like this. Uh, actually, a person requires six to seven hours of sleep. That is enough. And uh, after that, you can be actively working. You, the whole day you can be active. But we are sleeping 12 hours. Uh, 13 hours, 14 hours, 15 hours, even Sunday it is limitless. Okay, so we, we get up at 12 o'clock in the afternoon and take bath and then have food. Okay, in, in cities we are like that only. Okay, if uh, wife is coming and uh, asking us to get up, then what we will say? Today is Saturday, Sunday, at least let me sleep. Okay, today see uh, in our group there are 140, 150 members. Because today is Sunday, they must be sleeping today. <laughs> Okay, they don't have interest to come and sit in this class. It is because uh, the mode with, with, which is acting on him. Okay, the mode which is, luckily we all are in Sattvaguna. Okay, that's why we all are here. We all are listening to Bhagavad Gita. We all are listening to this class. Otherwise, if we are not in Sattvaguna, if Sattvaguna influence is not there on us, we will not come to this center. By now we will be in some shopping mall or somewhere, or pub bar somewhere, and we will be enjoying. How we will be, you know, sitting lazy at home and then enjoying. So that is the mode of ignorance. Then, what will happen to people who are that mode of passion, mode of ignorance, mode of, you know, goodness? So that's what Krishna is going to tell us. Yatha sattve pravrut pralayam yati deva brut deha brut Padot when one dies in the mode of goodness, he attains to the pure higher planet of the great sages. When one dies in the mode of passion, he takes birth among those engaged in futile actions, activities. And when one dies in the mode of ignorance, he takes birth in the animal kingdom. Yeah. So don't think that you know everything is same. It does not matter where we are. It does not matter how we are. Current is important, let us enjoy the current moment. Life is like an ice cream, enjoy it before it melts. <laughs> we think, right? Huh? Life is like an ice cream, right? And if you keep seeing the ice cream and you don't enjoy it, what will happen? <laughs> Can you enjoy tomorrow? Ice cream? Like ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> Good. You are in a different mode. <laughs> okay. So, Krishna is telling here, if you are in Sattvaguna and leaving the body, you will take birth in the Devata's planet, upper planetary system. So this whole material nature is, you know, having a 14 planetary system. This is completely 14 planetary system. We are in the earth. Okay. So above us, there are six planets. We are the seventh planet. And below us, there are seven planets. Okay. We can take birth in any planet. Based on our mode, based on the influence of the mode on us. If you are leaving the body when we are in Sattvaguna mode, that means like us, people who are here. <laughs> when they leave, where will they go? Higher planets, not on the earth. They will go to higher planets. Higher planets means in the planets of Devatas. Okay, you may be one of the demigod. You may be Indra. You may be Chandra. <laughs> you may be Surya. Or you may be Brahma. Are you maybe some Saptarshi? Are you maybe anybody who are or Yaksha? 
kinnera kim purusha anybody you want okay so if you are living in sattvaguna then you will get uh, life in the higher planets or in the great sages okay so so what will happen if pious person because of his piety is going and taking birth in pious planets let's say you have 10000 rupees and uh, you want to go to kodai canal and you want to spend your 5 10000 rupees how many days you can spend how many days you can one day after one day if you say no i still want to stay in kodai canal what will they do they will in the five star hotel can they allow you to stay for uh, uh, more than one day if you have only 10000 rupees no but you will say no boss i don't have money in my pocket but i still want to stay in your hotel what will he say he will send a security guard and he will push us out <laughs> okay in the same way because of the piousness that you have today you may be going to the pious planets and once the pious credit is over then they will push you out and you will be sent back this is like a uh, resort enjoying for uh, some days what you earned money okay once you spent whatever you earned what will happen you will come back and you will start the daily life again going to office coming to home <laughs> and uh, earning money and then accumulating some more money and the next year again you will plan trip okay instead of kodai canal you will go manali yeah? <laughs> some other place you will go and some other place you will enjoy and some more days you will enjoy and come back to again your after 10 days or 15 days you will come back and you will come back to normal life so this is what happens if you have a pious credit so you will be allowed to stay in the pious planets only till you spend your pious credit once your your prayer pious credit is spent then you will be sent back to the uh, on the earth okay again you have to accumulate some more pious credits then you again you will have eligibility to go there but understand one thing being in sattvaguna you may be thinking that it is good going to pious planets but understand one thing that is also not permanent for you you are coming back again to the material world again to the that is also part of the material please understand that is also part of the material world maybe it is a five star hotel or maybe ten star hotel okay you will have more enjoyments there once you finish your credit then you come back and then enjoy the same life what you are enjoying today again you have to accumulate the pious credit to go back there so that is not permanent you are in the material world you are in a temporary world so let us say if you are in a mode of passion and you die then what happens if you are in the mode of passion and die you will take a birth among those who engage in fruitive activities okay that means you will come back to human being that means you leave this body you will get another human body if you are in mode of passion and you are leaving the body you will you will get another human body so that you can again do some more fruitive activities fruitive activities means i am doing this action so that i get this benefit okay so every action that we do will see that we get some benefit this is the purpose why we even perform yajna tapa dana anything that we perform is what so that we can be rich more okay we can be uh, we can be getting the more greater name fame wealth health everything okay so these these are called fruitive activities We, we see so many people are going to temple and doing circumlation, or maybe doing some yajnas, or maybe doing some tapasyas, or maybe say they are doing some you know charities. You ask them why are you doing this? Huh? Why are you doing this? I'll get a better life. I'll get a better life. If I if I do charity to someone, then my future will be better. Okay. If I am a king for one kingdom, then I can become a king for two kingdoms. <laughs> okay. this is the reason why we do yajna dana tapa right so we get a body so that we can enjoy more and we get a body so that we can do more fruitive activities and we can get more uh, this thing then if you are leaving your body in the mode of ignorance this tama guna then what will happen you will take birth in animal kingdom so we become an animal okay we become animal so 
let us not at least be in mode of ignorance so that we at least don't lose our body <laughs> human body okay so our goal should be not to lose the human body at least so that we can at least get some more pious credit in next life if not in this life okay but that should not be the goal let us try to get a better goal so we have seen the three modes and in these three modes the characteristics we have seen and in these three modes what is the result that we get we have seen okay i just try to summarize in the in the table so these are the material modes if you see this is bhuloka bhuloka is the center okay and upper planetary system i'm telling you bhuvar loka loka this is what is this called swarga loka mahar loka jana loka tapa loka satya loka okay bhu bhuvar swarga mahar jana tapa satya under under the earth there are seven more planets atala vitala sutala Talatala, Mahatala, Rasatala, Papa. These are the planets that we have. Those many planets we have. We can take birth in any of the planets. Huh? So, so if you see the Vishnu, right? The Vishnu. The Vishnu is uh, in the Garbhodaka portion, and from the navel of the Vishnu, there is a lotus stem, and at the top there is a lotus flower, and on the top. There is a Brahma, okay, and this lotus stem, whatever is there, this lotus stem is fourteen planets, okay. This lotus stem is divided into fourteen planets, and the topmost planet is Brahma Loka, and this total is material world. This total is material world. That means Brahma Loka is also in the material world. From the Brahma Loka. Till Patala, everything is material. You may be thinking that I am promoted. Okay, from Bhuloka to Brahmaloka. Let us say, from Bhuloka to Brahmaloka event, because of the piousness that I have, because of the greatness that I have, whatever it may be, because I am in a Sapraguna. Okay, I might have taken birth in Brahmaloka, but please understand, this Brahmaloka is also part of the material world, this material nature. Okay. So once after you finish your pious credit, then you will come back again to the Buddha. If you uh, if you are in a Tamo Buddha and you die, go to Patala. Up to Patala, you can take any birth. So this is but Krishna is beyond this. So now, now we understood. We are in the influence of material nature. Now we want to come out of the material nature. Whom should we approach? Whom should we approach? How we can come out of material influence? So we should approach a person who is not in the influence of material nature. Okay, who is not in the influence of material modes, right? If you don't approach a person who is not in the influence of material in, uh, material modes, you will still not get it. So if even if you approach demigods who are in Swargaloka, even if you approach Some other Maharshis in the Janaloka, or even if you approach uh, Tapoloka uh, uh, demigods, or even if you approach Brahma, what will happen? Can you get uh, uh, you know liberated from these modes? No, because you know if Mata Ji has hundred rupees, if I ask her to give money, how much she can give me? <laughs> she can only give hundred rupees. She cannot give me more than hundred rupees. If I ask two hundred rupees, she will say I don't have. Two hundred rupees. I have only hundred rupees. If you want, you take it. Otherwise, go. <laughs> so she will tell it, right? So if you want two hundred rupees, what do you should do? You should go to some other prabhu who has five hundred rupees in his pocket. Okay. So if you want to come out of the material mode, you have to go to a person who is free from the material nature, material material influence. So you have to approach Krishna. Krishna is the only one who is controlling the material nature, who is controlling the material modes. So, if you really want to come out of the material modes, we should approach. So, let us see. Mamcha yogya bhichare na bhakti yoga na sevate. Sagunam samatai kitam Brahma bhuya ya kalpate. Who 
one who engages in full devotional service in all circumstances at once transcends the modes of material nature and thus comes to the level of Brahman. Okay. So Krishna is telling if you can perform a full devotional service, Maam Chayo Agya Bicharena. Agya Bicharena means full devotion to the Krishna. Okay. It's not like uh, Monday one God, Monday one fasting. Tuesday another God, Tuesday another fasting, uh, Wednesday another God, Thursday another God, Friday another God. We have, right? We go to one one temple on one one day. Mataji, one, Thursday, where will you go? Sai Baba temple. So, Friday? Lakshmi Devi temple. Saturday? Hanuman temple. Tuesday? <laughs> so, every week we have one one God. Okay. Every week you go to one one God. This is not bhakti. Krishna is not telling this is bhakti. Krishna is not telling. Krishna is telling you perform avya bicharena bhakti. Avya bicharena bhakti means single focused. One husband. Right? One husband and you, your emotion should be for one husband. Not for many husbands. So if you show your emotion for many husbands, it becomes vebichari. Right? It becomes vebichari. So Krishna is telling, don't show your feelings for one day one God, another day another God. If you show your feelings for one day one God, and another day another God, it becomes vebichari and bhakti. Yeah, uh, it, a chaste lady does not show her feelings to other people other than her husband. Right? That is called Agya Bichare. Okay. So, if you can perform your devotional service only for Krishna, then it is Agya Bichare in Bhakti. So, Krishna is telling if you really want to transcend the modes of material nature, you have to perform Agya Bichare in Bhakti. Don't accept 10 types of gods. Uh, observe fasting for one day, one god, another day, another god. Not bhakti. This will not help you transcend the modes. Okay. This will not help you to come out of the sakuguna, to come out of the prajoguna, to come out of the tabhoguna. Okay. But if you surrender to Krishna, Krishna is telling you do Abhya Bicharena Bhakti. He is telling, he is not just telling you do Abhya Bicharena Bhakti. Krishna is telling Maam Chayo Abhya Bicharena. Maam means to me. To me. You consider me only as a God. You worship me only. And you exhibit all your feelings only for me. Not for any other devatas. Not for any other devis. Then you will transcend the modes of material nature. You understood now? Okay. So if you don't want to go to Devaka planets, if you don't want to go to upper planets, if you don't want to go to lower planets, and if you want to transcend the material nature, you have to do? You have to worship only Krishna. This is the essence of this particular verse and this particular chapter. Okay? So the aim is to transcend the modes, right? The aim is to transcend the modes. Then you have to approach someone who has already transcended. All devatas in material nature, they have not transcended the material modes. Even Brahma is under the influence of modes of material nature. Please understand. Brahma himself says, I am under the influence of material mode. Shiva says, I am under the influence of material mode. Every demigod says, I am under the influence of material modes. A person who is in the well, can he protect you? Or can he take you out of the well? So if you really want to be saved from the well, the saver, savior should be where? Outside the well. Okay. So Krishna is outside the well. Krishna has already controlled the material nature. So we should be performing bhakti only for Krishna. So example I have given here one. So maybe we will discuss the story later. Okay. So this is one person who is actually a, 
uh, a person who actually kills animals and uh, eat animals and then with the uh, uh, with the animal flesh only he will be his uh, livelihood is taken care of only by the selling the animal flesh okay so narada met him narada asked him you are killing so many animals it is a sin then what for you are doing all this act then he says i have to take care of my family members they all should be happy enjoying okay they all should be not struggling so i have to take care you know what happens because you are killing the animals you get sin and if you kill one hen you have to take birth like a hen and then that the kill the hen should take birth as a human being and that human being will kill you again when you are as a hen if you kill 100 hens you have to get killed by 100 hens in the future lives so are you ready to take this and he says no then narada told you go and ask your family members who are actually enjoying with the things that you are doing if they can share your sins then come back and tell me if they can share so that at least you can be saved then he went and asked his wife his father his uh, son his uh, ex wife and relations whom he is taking care then nobody is ready to take the sins of this hunter okay they said why should i take your sins you have chosen this profession to take care of us it's your problem you know, it's not one making somebody else okay so then then he realized then he realized i am doing lot of sins and these sins are going to punish me in the past in the in the future okay then he went back to narada and said narada my family members are not ready to take my sins what should i do then he said you become a sadhu and go and do the hari naam publicity okay chhat hare nama hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 rama hare rama 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 hare hare tell the glory of hari naam to all the people then that uh, hunter said if i keep chanting hari naam what will happen to me <laughs> who will take care of my body then he said if you believe in hari naam hari naam is uh, non different from krishna krishna form krishna's name are not different you have a faith on the hari naam and take this mantra and chant hari naam and tell the glories of hari naam to all okay krishna will take care of you then he went and he went to some ashram then he sat and he started meditating on hari and then he started chanting hari naam and he is preaching hari naam to all the people and then people thought that he is great sadhu okay he is great sadhu guru and people started coming with fruits prasada <laughs> and uh, gifts so many gifts they they started coming okay so if you go to temple or if you go to some guru or if you go to somewhere no what will you do you take some gift right so you take some prasad at least bananas you will take right or at least coconut you will take <laughs> to the temple so in that way so many devotees started coming and so many devotees started giving him prasad so that way his uh, body is maintained so he is not having any problem for the food he started chanting and he is doing the uh, prachar okay so then after few years narada came back so when narada came the moment when this uh, hunter has seen narada the narada was his guru narada has given him his current life and he made him free from all the things so he he immediately got up and he want to Uh, pay obeisances to Narada. So while he is going towards Narada, the the whole floor was full of all ants and all insects. So he was jumping here and there so that he will not be touching the or he will not be you know yeah. killing the uh, insects or uh, you know ants or anything. And he is going till he went till Narada. And now he has to pay obeisances, right? So for him to pay obeisances now, and if he if he just fall on the feet of Narada, what will happen? Again, the ants will die. so he cleaned with his uh, towel he cleaned the whole floor and then uh, uh, he paid obeisances to narada and narada asked what happened to you why are you behaving like this <laughs> why are you behaving like this? why are you dancing while walking <laughs> why are you behaving like this then he said uh, see i don't want to kill any animal while i am walking okay while i am walking i have seen lot of ants here see the see the compassion 
uh, that he developed uh, towards the other animals, other living entities, just because he was holding what? Just because he was holding Harinam. Just because he was always chanting Harinam, he got, uh, you know, he, he got freed from all the modes of uh, material nature influence. Okay. At one time, he used to kill animals. You know, his habit is not to just kill animals. He used to half kill the animals. He used to half kill the animals and he will let the animal die on its own. Another half. That is the uh, you know, attitude that he has. And such a person to kill the ant, he is worried. So that is the transformation that he has got in his mind. Uh, just because he, he, he is chanting Harina. Okay, that is the power of Harina. So, so if you really want to transcend the modes of material nature, let us chant Harina every day. At least one round. If not one round, if not you are chanting one round, chant at least one round. If you are already chanting one round, chant at least four rounds. If you are already chanting four rounds, chant at least eight rounds. If you are already chanting eight rounds, chant at least 16 rounds. Okay. So, if you chant more and more, you will be freed from the material clutches. You will be freed from the material clutches that fast. You might be thinking that I have a lot of life in the future. I, be, I will live for another 100 years. Who knows what will happen? Nobody knows what will happen next second. Let us not lose the opportunity that we have today. Okay, so this is the moment where we have to take Harina. This is the moment where we have to chant Harina. This is the moment where we should be taking a decision that we should be freed from all material nature and material modes and chant and uh, you know become free from uh, this illusion, become free from this material nature. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Last, but last shloka for today. So in this verse, Krishna is telling, you might be thinking, see, you, you, you might, you might, see, basically you want to uh, become free from the influence of the material modes. And Krishna said, you perform akuntita bhakti. Akuntita bhakti means avya bhicharena bhakti in Sanskrit. Okay. So, so, Agya Vicharena Bhakti, if you want to perform, you might be thinking that, okay, you mentioned that the demigods are not someone whom we have to worship. Not on Monday, one God, Tuesday, one God, Thursday, one God, Friday, one God. Okay, we realized that. And from today onwards, we worship Krishna. Okay, we worship God. Everybody is having a perception about the God. People might be thinking, somebody might be thinking, impersonal Brahman is a God. Okay, so Krishna is declaring here, that even the source for the impersonal Brahman is me. That means, even for the demigods, Krishna is the source. Even for the material nature, Krishna is the source. Even for the impersonal Brahman, Krishna is the source. So Krishna is telling, if you really want to transcend the material nature, if you really want to transcend the modes of material nature, don't even approach impersonal Brahman. That's why he said, Maam chayo avya bicharena. Worship me, he said. Worship me. Your object of worship should only be Krishna. Nothing else. Your object of worship should be only Krishna. Nothing else. Down that worship will help you get liberation. That worship will help you to get Ti, Mukti, Moksha. Otherwise, we have to struggle again and again in this material world. That's why he has shown here the effulgence that we are seeing. Okay. So let us all commit at least one round chanting from today so that we will get a taste. Uh, if you think at least sarva, 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 with the material senses that we have instead of serving ourselves, let us serve Krishna. If you can serve Krishna, you will develop love for Krishna. You will start meditating upon Krishna. You will start meditating name of Krishna. And you will realize that there is no difference between Krishna and Krishna name. Chanting the name of the Krishna is, you know, taking the darshan of Krishna. Okay. So, 
so that's why i have taken something from scripture it says that the, there is no difference between the maha mantra and krishna okay hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 rama hare rama 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 hare hare so i will i will organize a sankalpa session one day so maybe maybe people who are already chanting four rounds can take four rounds sankalpa so that you will be committing four rounds every day to chant and uh, the people who are chanting already one round i will conduct a uh, one round sankalpa so that you will be committing one round sankalpa. and uh, uh, prabhu ji will tell you in the announcements but i have sent one form please uh, fill the form everybody request request is everyone fill the form so that you know whatever sadhana you are doing you know, it has to reach krishna right so the sadhana whatever you are doing if it does not reach krishna what will happen we don't get the benefit of what sadhana we are doing the way that we make our sadhana report to reach to krishna is only through parampara okay you report to your leaders we report to our leaders they report to their leaders they report to krishna this is the way of reporting to krishna you cannot directly report to krishna krishna will not listen to you <laughs> right so we have to reach krishna through parampara okay if you are chanting one round tell your leaders if you are chanting two rounds tell your leaders if you are chanting four rounds tell your leaders your leaders will ensure that your sadhana report is reaching till krishna okay krishna said he is giving this knowledge in parampara and you acknowledge also through parampara okay so if you are getting knowledge through parampara means through gurus you are getting you worship also krishna through guru if you want to pay obeisances to krishna pay obeisances to guru that will reach krishna because the knowledge of krishna you reach you received through guru okay the path the path you received in the same path you have to send it back your acknowledgement okay so you please report your sadhana report your uh, details uh, to the temple temple will take care of reporting it to uh, you know uh, uh, higher authorities okay thank you very much let's end the session here and um, we will start the 15th chapter 15th chapter is purushottama yoga okay purushottama yoga the yoga of purushottama okay so how we purushottama means who is purushottama krishna god has a name <laughs> you have a name i have a name god also has a name so from today onwards let us not talk about god let us talk about god has a name right so the uh, purushottama means krishna so how to attain krishna we will get in 15th chapter purushottama yoga thank you very much much mancha kalpata rubhya chakra pasindu bhaye vacha paritanam pavane bho vais thank you so much prabhu uh, something like very astonishing <laughs> for all of us many analogies and so many deep 